praise God. I want to honor God for Minister Nixon and the vision of Elevate Africa Networks. It is a vision whose time has come. There's nothing as beautiful as a vision whose time has come. And um, what I've learned over the years is that whatever begins big is not genuine, is not real. Everything of God, everything that God does begins in seed form. He is a God of seed, time, and harvest. And this is how great things begin. By the grace of God over the years, I've seen things grow. I had the opportunity to see things grow, to see two people gathered in the place and to see hundreds of people gathered in the same area years after. Uh, we have worked with a number of church plants, both locally and also in other nations, by the grace of God. And uh, it is good to see God begin something and God working on the thing and God giving it growth. Apostle Paul says God will give it a body. God is going to give it a body and the vision will speak and never lie. So like Apostle Taylor says, we want to honor, thank you sir, wonderful ministry, I want to honor him, like what he said is faithfulness. You are faithful where you are. I believe you can never be where you must be unless you are faithful where you are. So if you are faithful, God takes you from where you are to where you must be. And we, we thank God for that and for the word. A man of God, Apostle Taylor, was such a seasoned word from a seasoned general in the kingdom. And we salute you, sir. Well, the Tando is here. We were in the same class some, some time ago doing something on leadership, which is my passion. As much as kingdom economics. We are talking this morning on kingdom finance. Please, you've got to watch me. On kingdom economics, and uh, by the way, uh, Doc, I've got two topics. I decided to do the other one this time, and then the tender making that are tonight. So I'm talking right now on 15 income generating models for nonprofits. 15, one five, 15 or 15, wherever I come from, wherever I come from, or wherever you scoot, 15 income. Generating models for nonprofits. I'll be covering uh, church as well as parachurch organizations. I mean, uh, it's a very interesting term. Uh, in the West, uh, they would call something like Elevate TV a parachurch organization. It's a very interesting term, but for the sake of this presentation, allow me to use the term parachurch. Uh, so that we know what we're talking about. I'll also be using words like NPO or non-profit to, to define this whole thing. Non-profit is also interesting. I don't have time for, for that now. But God says in Isaiah 48, 17, I'm the Lord your God who, give, who teaches you to profit. I'm the Lord your God who, what, who teaches you to profit. So in other words, the term non-profit was a term that was coined by the, by the world to put the church in a certain mode. But God himself says, I teach you to profit. And the righteous, whatever he does, is going to prosper. So you can prosper and be non-profit. All right. But we'll just use the term for the sake of this presentation, non-profit, so that we all flow and know what we're talking about. We'll deal with the other controversy later. All right. As a guy called Marcus Kotsie, he says sustainability is one of the biggest issues, if not the biggest, facing nonprofits today. Nonprofits are first looking at new models where they can generate their own revenue and reduce donor dependency. On the other hand, donors are increasingly expecting nonprofits to be sustainable on their own. In other words, donors are tired of giving out money or they want to see you with a system in place but it's sustainable. Even 
when it comes to other stuff like uh, like even when you want to get funding for a business or funding for for building or funding to develop something you go to a place you go to a bank and sometimes a bank will tell you something that is very very funny very very interesting they'll say to you if you want funding for a million or funding to to run this thing you need to first raise two hundred thousand I'm saying, if I had that money, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> uh, so we need now to find ways that we can generate and trust God for income as um, so-called non-profits. My first nine points in this presentation are going to be from a research that was uh, compiled by some staff at Stanford University and how many of you know that we can't reinvent the wheel a friend of mine bought his wife Meg Wills worth 100,000 rand anyway that is money but they're still around <laughs> the Megs that are 100,000 rand they're still around the Meg wheels that are thousand for four, they are still round. A tire, uh, one day, oh my daughter seen the Lord saying she trusts in God. Uh, she had some issues with the with the a, a BM uh, SUV, and she needed uh, to spend about seven point five per tire. The tire is still round. The tire of an Uno is still round. So you can't reinvent the wheel. Some things are just universal. And we've got to, we can develop concepts around those. The first one, this guy's Stanford put together is a model, is what we call the heartfelt connector or the philanthropic model. It's focusing on causes that resonate with existing concerns of large numbers of people at all income levels by creating a structured way for these people to connect when none had previously existed. You're trying to reach large numbers of people, trying to meet a cause, and such causes are like health, education, literacy, uh, and you go on, and um, when you do that, you've got to communicate your cause, number one. Communicate your case for support in a compelling, simple, and concise way. You have got to communicate your case. You don't just go, you know, I have heard from God. Yeah, they ask, which God do you hear from? And number two, and number B, rather, you have to create infrastructure for at least one prototype to attract and involve large numbers of supporters. Number C, you have got to have a significant group of prospects we have already shown that they will fund organizations that address that type of cause. The different funders and governments and uh, corporate that sponsor or fund different kinds or types of causes. All right, number two, we've got a model called beneficiary builder. These are funds which come from fees, but beneficiaries pay for services. For example, Elevate Africa Networks. I'm mean, talking about you, have got, you are coming on board, you buy airtime on Elevate, either you, you've got a slot, uh, you're doing a devotion, or either you're doing advertising, you pay a fee to broadcast your program. As you pay the fee or as you buy airtime, you are helping Elevate to further its cause by the same time you're furthering your cause. So that is called a beneficiary builder. In other words, like they say, there's no free money. So, uh, most people say, what's in there for me? As much as that does not sound very scriptural, actually it's scriptural, uh, that is how the word operates. People want to say, what's in there for me? Do you know that David, before David could take out Goliath, David says, what shall be given to the man who will take this man down? There had to be a motivator. What is going to be given? What's in there for me? Then he says, oh, you know what? The man shall be given. Uh, the king's daughter said, oh, I'm listening. 
<laughs> and his father's house shall be free in Israel. That's what I'm talking about. Let's do this. David at the year first was in there for me. Thus, that more is called beneficiary builder. The number three is called a member motivator. There's a model called member motivator. That's membership or partnership donations. Most churches uh, fund the activities via tithes and offerings. And uh, while most part of church, like Elevate and other uh, organizations or non-profit would uh, do what is popularly known as partnership. Dr. Taylor spoke about that. He'll speak about that even more in the evening. Uh, uh, it's called partnership. And uh, one good model on partnership in this regard is uh, what's done by the Coplands. The Coplands, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, they're very strong in this very wonderful thing. And they've got biblical and sound teaching about partnership. All right. So in other words, a ministry like Elevate has got to have people who are partnering with it to say, this is the cause. And here are we. Some years ago, Kenneth Copeland had a dream. In that dream, he had a vast piece of land. He had a very vast piece of land, but then he had no seed. In the same dream, he saw people carrying some seed. And they're very sorrowful. See, you guys, you have so much to carry some seed. So much seed. Why are you angry? Why are you sad? They said to him, you know what? We have got this seed, but we have no land. I said, oh, come on. Come on in. I've got land. I have no seed. You have seed. You have no land. Now bring your seed to my land. That's partnership. And they enjoy the harvest together. Apostle Taylor said, uh, David says, so shall be the part of the man who goes to war and the one who remains to take care of the baggage. Both are going to part alike. In other words, you're going to fight and I'm sending you to the battle. So as you are fighting, I'm getting the baggage. When you come back, we share the spoils. So what do we do? We put Elevate TV on air. When we do that, we get the reward for souls saved, bodies healed, souls delivered, lives prospered. Whatever God does through Elevate, we share alike. That's partnership. Praise be to God. We have another model called the Big Better. The Big Better is major donations that are coming from in the few individuals. It's most of our prayers, right? Go around this. God just sent me that multi-millionaire who just write one check. Praise be to God. Elevate believing God for 257K. Before December, Elevate is trusting God for 257,000 rand in order to do the work effectively. And if we could just have that one man who would write just one check, say, stop making noise. I, I, I've got this. He writes one check. Remember some years ago, a man of God, one who raised me uh, back in Zimbabwe, he was trusting God to, to be on air and do a campaign that he called Faith for the Nation. Uh, uh, fast forward, and then he goes, he passed by the office of uh, a brother called Strive. Uh, he's uh, running some business back in Zimbabwe and all over the world. Uh, Strive was even with uh, uh, Bishop Jack some, some few uh, weeks ago talking about finances and leadership. So he goes to his office unannounced, then they have a little chat and then he says, oh, Prophet, this is a world of vision. Says, yeah, that's wonderful. But then, then he says to Trife, you know what? I'm just trusting God to, 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 to do this. Says, no, Prophet, you know what? Uh, actually, I didn't even know you were coming, but uh, I, 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 I love this vision you're talking about. I, I'm going to, to, to arrange a meeting that you'd come and I'll do something. But, but for now, just hold, hold on, hold on. They call his secretary uh, uh, and, uh, and then he wrote a check of half a million dollars. In that time, I think the dollar, the dollar and the rand were almost one to one that time. The, the, the dollar, and, yeah, the Zim dollar was actually a good dollar. The Zim dollar used to be a good dollar. Actually, the Zim dollar used to be one to one of the pound at some point, and it's going back there. Even better. Double, double. Thank God for Zimbabwe. All right. 
So he calls him over. He calls, uh, uh, then the, then he, he opens his, his checkbook, and writes a check of half a million. And this is just, and the prophet was, was shocked. So, so then he says, uh, Strive, my says the prophet, come on, prophet, it's just money. I'm saying, my goodness, coming to a place where half a million dollars is just money. This is what he gave because he didn't even know he was going to give properly. But he said, for now, just hold on to this. And then he says, it's just money. My goodness. He says, it's just money. Whatever you're trusting God for the vision, whatever you're trusting God to do for that vision, it's just money. Praise be to God. And may God send us the strength and see of this world. Membership motivator is few individuals who can just write the check and say, Men of God, stop making noise, go and do the work. Praise be to God. It's interesting, you know, because uh, Apostle Peter says to, to the people, <laughs> Guys, choose some deacons. Choose some deacons, and these guys are going to do what? Are going to take care of the widows. Uh, let us focus on the ministry of prayer and the word. Peter calls that ministry prayer and the word. We're going to focus on the ministry of prayer and the word. Our calling, our ministry, our assignment is prayer and the word. We seek God on your behalf and we'll bring God's word to you. Huh? Then he says, choose deacons so that we don't get sight track from our mission, we focus on our assignment. And we need people in the house, in the kingdom of God, because the man of God, you focus on prayer and the word, I'll write the check. Praise be to God. So but choose, choose deacons, who, uh, uh, deacons, and, and by the way, deacons, when, when the primary chosen, when they primarily chose the deacons, the deacons were chosen to distribute bread. But deacons were chosen to share bread and to do, they were not chosen to, to, to run the pastor or to govern the pastor. They were chosen to help, they were chosen to administrate and all that as for another day. But then sometimes you find guys who are chosen to, do, to, 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 to help pass the bread around and to help the widows and all that, thinking that they are the one who will determine what the pastor must preach about. All right, then we have the big better. I spoke about uh, this big, big better, the guys who just write out a check. And then we've got a public provider. I'll just run through these. I want to go to the last six. Uh, I'll just rush through number five, uh, six, and seven going onward. Um, all right. So I have nine, which sound a little bit scholarly and all that. Then I've got my last six. They sound uh, more apostolic and more Christian. But this is very Christian too. All right. We have got a public provider. You provide essential service that the government or public corporations can partner with. There's so much money the government is using. And there's so much money the government and governments wants us to think they're using for good causes. And if you do something wonderful, that man can be diverted towards doing the real stuff. All right. Policy innovator. This model relies on government money also, but these nonprofits, they develop, let's say you, you find some, I would say a niche, or you find some, some gap, some stuff the government is not doing. For example, it's a, it's a wonderful cause, government is not covering. So, no, guys, you guys are busy doing this. You are busy doing, uh, uh, sponsoring uh, HIV and AIDS, orphans, or VCs and all that. You are busy uh, helping the illiterate and all that. But there's this other area here that is neglected. We're going to do that, and you will help us do it. Policy innovator. Point number seven is beneficiary broker. Beneficiary broker. NPOs who are competing with one another to provide, in other words, it's a little more like a tender process. You come and bring your cause, and the NPO brings its own cause, and then the government chooses a better cause, or the one with, with a better proposal, rather. That's called beneficiary broker. Point number eight is called here resource recycler. You receive in-kind donations from corporations, individuals, 
that you can help people dish out uh, one good guy who does this is um, Franklin Graham, Graham, the son of uh, Billy Graham with a Samaritan purse. You receive income donations and then you go and help the needy. All right. Number nine, the local nationalizer. This is when you do charity work. You just say, you know what? I, I think I want to do this in my heart and all that. You, you, you start first and then after that, you go around canvassing and uh, uh, lobbying and uh, soliciting for help from people uh, who are either from individuals, from corporate, or from the government and all that. That's called local nationalizer. Charity work that then you go and appeal for donations and there are so many organizations that are doing that websites that are there some 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 causes uh, yeah? that uh, there's this what do you call this is it called go funding or what there's one good thing they use for fundraising online Crowd, thank you crowdfunding because he's a doctor crowdfunding <laughs> praise god it's called crowdfunding but point number, 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 number 10 here, I want to, 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 to highlight. I'm going a little bit more what the should call spiritual. Point number 10, I'm talking about having faith in the operation of God. We can have all these methods. We can have a lot of things in place. We can have, a, we have wonderful banners, wonderful systems in place. We can have wonderful adverts, how wonderful uh, 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 promotion and all that. But a man of God has got to have faith in the operation of God. Say, so God has called me to do this. He is going to do it. Like Apostle Taylor. He didn't know, but he knew the one who sent him. And he knew as I go, he is going to order my steps. A man or a woman of God with a vision he has got to have faith in the operation of God. This is not my thing. This is God's thing. I, I was driving in Uganda in, uh, uh, from Entebbe Airport uh, going to Kambala. And I was, I was driving like, the, uh, like that. Rather, I was being driven. We were driving. And as we were dri driving like that, I was thinking about the ministry back home. There were challenges financially. And God said to me, I am more interested or I am in, in the prosperity of a ministry more than you are. I am more interested in the prosperity of that work more than you are. No, but sometimes we can be so passionate about our, about our vision, we forget this is God's work. It is his, you will finance it. You cannot let it fail. There is no way you can let it fail because if it fails, he has failed. I was pastoring in Marondera in Zimbabwe some years ago, I think it was around 2000, 1999. I was pastoring in Marondera and you know, it's, it's a very small town, uh, I think it's of Ferrari, depending on who is holding the canvas. Uh, <laughs> uh, and I had some challenges financially. And then I prayed, I fasted, I spoke the word, declared the word, I bound, I lost, I did all things, and nothing came out. Then I said to God, God, everyone in this city knows I'm your servant. If you don't come through, you're in trouble. <laughs> that everyone in this city knows I am your servant. If you don't come through, you are in trouble. <laughs> God is going to stand with his work. He is going to finance his work. He is going to stand for what he is his because if what God has assigned you to do fails, he has failed. So we need to have faith in the operation of God. Point number 11. You must preach vision, not budget. Preach vision. People have their own budgets, they have their own needs. You come, you come here to the house of God, somebody's trusting God for their rent to be paid, they're trusting God for their car installment repayment, they're trusting God for their kids in school, trusting God for this and that for the business. People have got so much budget of their own. So when you tell me for people, you don't preach budget, you preach vision. Preach the assignment. We want to reach out to nations. We want to touch Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa. We want to touch Asia and the nations. And we want to 
preach the gospel on mobile, on uh, video on demand, or on satellite and all that, when you bring the vision to the people, people are going to, people don't respond to need, they respond to vision. Some years ago in, in London, around Bongi, Bongi goes to London. When he goes to London, what happens there? He ministers in the church. As did miss in the church, what happened is one of the businessmen, that's this ago, right? many years ago, one of the business guys there, what does he do? He, thank you, writes a check of one million pounds. Not rands or zim dollars, pounds. I'm drinking to that. <laughs> oh God. One million pounds. So after the service, the local pastor, the host pastor calls the guy. He says to him, uh, are the zeros on the check correct? <laughs> says, yeah. <laughs> then he says, you have never given this kind of money to the local church. Then he said, Bongi, he has shown me vision. You have not. Bongi casts his vision. So I'm giving this vision. You don't show me any vision. People give towards vision. They don't give towards need. You can speak about your need. You can speak and do all the donkeys and cows come back home. But people don't respond to budget. They respond to vision. You have got to write the vision, cast the vision, and tell people have got to know why they are giving. You know, I've got so many needs, so if I'm going to part with my money, give me a good cause. If I'm going to part with my money, you've got to give me a very good cause because I also have needs of my own. Yes. So give me a compelling, a compelling cause. Give me a vision. So we preach vision and budget. Point number 12. The men and woman of God must be givers themselves. If we are going to raise funds for the ministry, the men and the woman of God must be givers themselves. They have to have a spirit of generosity, a giving spirit. There must be models because you know what? If people normally, or people rather, people don't respond to what you say, they respond to who you are. So if you speak finances and you are stingy on the inside, that's what they respond. Somebody said if you sneeze, that's what in Bible school, if, 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 if you sneeze, poor catch the cold. So you, 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 you can speak about giving. If you are stingy, people will be stingy because you are imparting who you are. You can speak faith. If you are full of unbelief, people receive unbelief. So when the men and women of God are give us themselves, what happens? The crowd or the, the ministry or the people that are under the same movement, they catch the same spirit. In every church plant I've ever planted, there are two things I've always seen before I teach for it. Before I even teach for it, in every church plant I've ever planted, the people, number one, they become prayerful. I was born again in a prayer meeting some years ago. I was born again in a prayer meeting and I love prayer. I, I love prayer. And be before I teach for it, people are prayerful already. But number two, they're generous. They are givers. I raised a church in the East, uh, in the East Rand, some years ago. And before I left it, probably about five or so years, before I left it, people were tithing five rand. We're not giving 10,000 rand in that space of time. I even know of uh, one of the people, they were, were, were then, then business, they asked me for a personal account. Give a seat of about 30 or 40,000 rand in all that. The people who, who come from nothing, but they catch the spirit, the principle of giving and receiving. So when the woman of God and man of God have the spirit, of giving, when they are gi givers themselves, the people catch the same spirit.
In other words, the man and woman of God should not have a receiver mentality or syndrome. Don't have a receiver mentality or syndrome. It's good to receive. It must be both give, giving and receiving. You sow and you reap. The man and woman of God, number one, must be givers. For them, number one, to pattern it. Number two, to impart it. You cannot take people where you have not been before. Praise be to God. You hear me making a comment here? I said you could hear that the word uh, that uh, Doratello speak or teaching here is a word from a seasoned man. I, I, I can hear if a sermon is coming from the brain or from deep. It's so easy. A sermon comes from the mouth or from the spirit. And what you are, what you have been through when you teach it, you impart it. You don't even struggle for it. You don't even, uh, it, it's coming out of you. Praise be to God. Point number what? Where are we? You're listening. You must understand fundraising is spiritual warfare. Fundraising is spiritual warfare. If there's an area the enemy wants to fight the church, is the area of money. We don't care how many people are going to try to conjure people and uh, manipulate them towards giving. If you're going to uh, give you uh, this and many bracelets, if you give thousand dollars, or I'll give you this water from Israel. I, I, I don't need water from Israel. I've got Valpre and quail from. <laughs> Praise be to God. Water from Israel, and and we don't care how many people are saying that giving is too biblical, tithing is too in the word. The question is not who is doing it on TV or is lying or manipulating. The question is, is it in the word? So giving is in the word. Tithing is in the word. We will speak about giving. We will teach about... Actually, uh, Paul says they need to be heretics. Yeah? So that those who are approved among you may be... Uh, so when we teach the real truth, they say, you know what? The way I heard that... That imposter... Okay, sorry. That man of God on TV saying this... And the way it's being taught here is different. There's something about this. I think this thing is good. No, there was a time in my life I almost detested the message, number one, on giving and sonship. I almost, because of the way it was abused. But I said to myself, it's in the word. It's in the word. It's in the word. I mean, uh, you, know, you know, sometimes people will, uh, will go to the pharmacy and get some drugs and then they abuse them. People will go and take ARVs and then they do what, what they call here uh, hunger. It's some kind of drug. They take, they take air, air RVs and they come and they, they, they. So, should people stop using them because the hunger boys are, are abusing them? No. If air RVs can help people, they must help people. We can't stop using them because some guys are abusing them on the street as drugs. If people take marijuana, ab, ab, marijuana is a good medicine which is being abused by people. People smoking and get high. But, but medicinally, it is used for better things. So are we going to shun what... Is, are, are, are you going to, to stay hungry? But the kids next door are starving. Are, are, we, are we going to stop doing what gives life? Just because, no, no, no. We must understand the enemy is fighting this message of, uh, of fundraising. So we need to be prayerful about it. Never underestimate the value of prayer when it comes to fundraising. Never underestimate the value of prayer. Never underestimate the value of prayer. You've got to push in prayer. You've got to take times of prayer, times before God, times of fasting, speaking the word, declaring the word, prayer walks, or prayer drive as you pray. You've got to take some time in prayer, calling upon the Lord and speaking his word and doing all the kind of warfare you need because unless it's done in the spirit, it can't manifest in the flesh. Unless it doesn't matter how many times you call for money, 
unless it's done in the spirit, it can't manifest in the flesh. One man of God, a uh, mature man of God said one day, it doesn't matter how long and how much you can talk about offering or giving, unless God touches their heart, the man will never come. So that's where prayer comes in. We have got to be prayerful. We have got to be prayerful. We have got to go before God. It's first released in the spirit before it manifests in the flesh or in the physical. Years ago, Israel had a problem. Israel had a problem uh, uh, during the time of the judges and they had a problem and uh, they were going through some struggle. And then when they had a problem, which even seemed to be economic and, 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 and political, God comes to Deborah. Then God says, Deborah, sing a song. Deborah, sing a song. I mean, this is a nation going through some stuff. This is a nation needing some, some guidance and some governance and some economic renewal or reform. And God says, Deborah, sing a song. Why? The battle is first spiritual. Unless the battle is won in the spirit, the victory can manifest in the flesh. That's my point number 13. 14. <laughs> I love this one. I love this one. Uh, if I I'd always started on this one, I would, I would start this, on this and finish on this one. Uh, this will preach. Show people what they are giving for. You must show people what they are giving for. For example, if you raise money for a PowerPoint screen, don't buy chairs. If money is raised for a camera, don't buy a server. Show people what they're giving for. Yes. Be transparent. Be honest. Genuine when it comes to money. Say, ah, you can tell me what to do. I'm the man of God here. I'm the man of God. I'm the visionary. I'm the most in the iron and the, and the medium and the all that. Can't tell me what to do. Listen to me. This, 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 this. This thing, I'm the man of God, I'm black. This, it's, not, it's not Bible, it's not Bible. It's not Bible, it's just an expression of some insecurities. You are the man of God, yes. Be man of God enough to show us what we're giving for. I am against people, this, uh, the, the flip side, of the coin, or the quarter is what we call a coin here. Uh, I'm against folk who want to come and demand or want to say, if I've given my money, you must do this and do that and do that. That's another extreme altogether. I'm talking about that. But I'm saying, without any compulsion, without any kind of pressure, be a volunteer to show people what they're giving for. Praise be to God. People give more when they see what their money is doing. People give more when they see what their money is doing. Value people. Show, appreciate them. Because people are the provision for the vision. Eh? People are the provision for the vision. God will send you people the resources. Remember, we, Jesus called us what? Jesus called us fishers of men. Right? We are. We agree on that. And when they raised the question about the text, he told Peter to go to the river and catch a fish. And then he says, there will be some money in there, right? He did that. He brought them money. So if we are fishers of men, as God has called us, and then the money is in the mouth of the fish, when God brings the fish, when God brings the people, the people are the provision for the vision. They bring resources. So you have got to appreciate. I'm not saying worship. I'm not saying worship givers. No, you don't have to worship givers. Appreciate them. Appreciate. By the way, when you say givers, it's also another term which we need to, to redefine as the church. We need uh, three minutes. Uh, to wind this whole thing up. We need to redefine this term that we call givers. Because 
I, I, I love the example that was given by Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Nett yesterday to say somebody can write a check of a million out of 10 million or 20 million, they'll feel nothing. And somebody can give 500 rand, which is the last money. They even trust God to go back home or for the meal the following day. And according to us, the guy with a million must be given preferential seat, preferential partner card or reserved parking and, and all that. But this, this, this woman gave 100%. This guy gave about 1%. So how do you measure giving? Actually, Jesus, actually spoke, when Jesus taught giving, Jesus never spoke about amount. He spoke of measure. It's the measure. So, we need to value even those who bring five francs must be valued. Value them, pray for them, next time they will bring the millions. All right. I think I've got my last point, if I'm not mistaken here. I was at 14, right? Point number 15. Only embark on projects inspired by God. You don't know how stayed up I was by Dr. Nets, uh, sorry, Dr. Uh, Taylor's uh, uh, commission. He just had to go. He just said, obey God. And God was going to reveal the rest. Huh? Uh, that, that, that bless me. That bless me. Only embark on projects inspired by God. It's my last point. One of the least. Only embark on projects inspired by God. Because if you embark on his projects, you will find them. If you embark on yours, you must find them. God bless you.